All right, you want a new truck. I've heard stories of guys who won't go to a job for a certain type of truck or they're not getting a truck. Or they'll quit a job if they say I want a new truck and they haven't given me one yet. I'm here today to tell you why. That's stupid. There's exceptions to, to to every rule, almost every rule. There's an exception. And you believe I should have a new truck or the truck that I want to drive. Now let me let me get this correct. Let me make sure I'm straight in the grid here. Yeah. Let me let me get this correct. Get this straight. If you are not going to the dealership and spending your money on the truck. You have no right or claim to what you drive at all. If you wanted that much control over what you drive down the street, you would buy your own truck. That simple. A couple other reasons. There's a good chance. It's not always. And a lot of the guys who've been driving for a while are going to really, really go off in the comments about this. That that three-year-old or four-year-old truck with 400,000 miles that we're going to give you, there's a good chance that runs better than the brand new one. I said it. I'm going to give you a time to, 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 to be mad at what I'm saying. Why? Well, my father's from the old school. He's been driving for 20-something years. He says something like, a truck isn't broken until 300,000 miles. Now, I don't know if that's te technically true anymore because when he started driving, trucks were, it's almost an alien creation compared to what we drive now. And those trucks were reaching a million miles on a regular situation. But I will say I'm driving the truck right now with 500,000 miles on it. It's 2016, if I'm not mistaken. Is it 16? I don't know. Chris, correct me about it if I'm wrong. But... I could get a new truck. I could just, you know, be that prima donna and diva and be like, I need a new truck. I don't drive until I get one. And I could go for that new truck. Get that new truck smell. But one thing new trucks go through that sometimes older trucks don't go through is recalls. Did you know these, some of these new trucks need to be updated like phones? Did you know that? And they'll just pull you in because, oh, it just needed an update. You know, a lot of the, some of the things they're using on the, 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 the brand spanking new trucks are not really tried and true yet. So they're really just shooting in the dark to see if it will work. If it doesn't, then you got to go in and keep dealing with it. Or they've done something different with their setup and it's proving to be a problem. You get you a truck that's, and this is from really a company standpoint here. If, if they give you a truck that's like, has has 180,000 miles on it and it's 2020 and that's a 2018 or something like that and you starting to uh, pitch a B over it it shows a few things number one it shows that you ain't here to make no money you're worried about something that is just I mean I hate to say it's stupid you're worried about how you look or your comfortable level and from a 2016, 17 to a 2018 to a 2020, it, it isn't that much of a difference. It ain't like they put you in a 98 century, which a lot of you rookies don't even know what that is. But it, they ain't like they, they put you in one of those or, 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 or whatever, or um, a, a Freightliner classic with the foam coming out of the seats. It's not like they put you in one of those, but you being so into getting the new one does what you don't understand is it doesn't affect your pay rate. Now, a couple ways it kind of does, depending on the situation. If that truck was not maintained maintained well or someone didn't take it in to get taken care of on a regular basis, it may be some things about to break down. That's a way you could look at it. Oh, it's new and it needs to break down. You know, it wasn't taken care of. But if it was, 
everything's already been taken care of. So meaning some guys, some older guys tell you they're looking at it like everything that was going to go wrong with it went wrong with it. So I'm getting it with fresh stuff, problems that's been addressed already. And I will just have little things here and there, you know, a shot go out here, you know, stuff like that. Now, if you're trying to have to pay for it, like, like if we switch over and go leasing, and you're like, uh, I'm about to get this truck that I have to pay for weekly. I would say, yeah, go get a new truck. I would say, I would lean that direction. I wouldn't be so stern to say you have to, but I would lean that direction because you get a warranty and all that other stuff. So if it did have a problem, the warranty's got to fix it. But if you're just a company driver, you just go to Swift, they throw you a truck and you're in there pissed off in the office because you didn't get a brand new one? Dude, you're tripping. You're not here to make no money. Your first complaint is what the truck is and not what your money is. Well, if if it's a newer truck, it's going to break down less. That is not always the case. (laughs) It is, let me tell you, it is not always the case. It isn't. Sometimes you'll have a new truck that's just having issues and and they go in the shop more than somebody's driving by you one of them square freight liners. You know, and there's guys at the bottom that say the best truck you can get is one that's 10 years old. It's all perspective. But if you're just coming in, and let's say you're 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 young, you haven't been driving that long, or you're new to the company, you really do not have the social capital with that company to demand or request anything. If they want you to drive uh, 2017 International That's what you're driving You have no skin in the game You ain't put no down payment down You don't have to maintain the truck you get So what are you talking about You are a company driver You do what the company says Most of the time If they tell you this is what you're driving bro, That's what you're driving And if you run your truck Your check's you know, between the new truck and the old truck, your check is not going to, you know, change that much because you don't have to pay for the fuel, your company. So the fact that you went in here and you made a problem because you didn't get the, 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 the good, good looking truck you wanted shows that you're not really focusing on why you're there. You're there to make money. You're there to do your job. Now, if you care that much, you can go at Swift, you can walk on over to the lease office. Put some skin. Ain't a whole bunch of skin, but you can put some skin on the table. And get the truck you want. Well, I don't care me leasing PS, man. I ain't trying to, you know, pay that money, man. I ain't trying to then shut up. That's what the old saying is put your money where your mouth is. If you don't want to pay, drive what they give you. Right? Tell me if I'm wrong. I only drive Peterbilt's. You're an idiot. You're an idiot. Paychecks cash whether you're driving a Peterbilt or a Freightliner, a Volvo or a ProStar, a Mac or I'm running out of our or Western Star. It doesn't matter what you're driving, really. If if it's operational, let me say that it's operational. Because if let's say both of these trucks are operational, just mine's a ProStar and yours is a long nose Peterbilt. If I drop more loads off than you, I get paid more than you. That's a vanity thing. And if you're coming in the game worrying about your vanity already, you lost. Because that means I can have a crappy pay scale. But I can put you in a long nose P. Right? Yeah, well, I get the truck I want, so I'm good, right? I'm straight. Everything's good. But I'm paying you 32 cents a mile. You could have went over here and made 53 cents a mile. But you got that truck you want to go. The truck ain't got nothing to do with your check, bro. Unless you're like literally owner hopping or something like that. If you're doing that, then okay, I get it. But, you know. You're paying for it. You want what you want. I get it. And you're putting your skin in the game to get what you want. But if you're a company driver, shut up. Shut up, man. Take the truck. Learn how to do your craft. Make your money. You should not be in there like, I've seen dudes who just miss getting a peat at a company. Yes, sir. 
in the wrong door but yeah if you if you're if you're worrying about that then then you're you're seriously uh, about to be in a bad situation because you could easily be fooled to sign it or do anything you know I could throw you in a truck for ten dollars an hour as long as it's a truck you like to drive you're gonna deal with it that's what you're saying well now the money matters too which one is it which one is it when you go to these companies, you better be focusing on what they're paying you and what is owed to you. If you're not focusing on that, I don't know what to say to you. I don't know what to tell you. Drive what you're going to get. Do not get caught up in BS like, I want a prettier truck, but I don't want to pay for a prettier truck. I want to be company. If your company, your company, you don't have skin in the game to request or ask for anything. Take what they give you. If I don't like Peterbilt's, I'm not into them, you know? But if I was a company driver at RST, I think they have company drivers at RST, but if I was a company driver at RST and he sent me my next truck number, that's what I'm driving, bro. Now I'm going to complain about it and make, make, <laughs> and make videos about it, but... It's it's not going to stop me from getting paid now. That don't make any sense. Now I got to switch doors because this guy said they put me in the wrong door. Don't do drugs. Oh.